welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton and beyond. This week, we sit down with a double world champion as she talks of how 2016 has been for her so far. And we visit Montford Secondary as they attempt to get into the record books with the world's longest rally. She is the face of Spanish badminton. The double world champion needs no further introduction. Carolina Marin's rise to prominence a year and a half ago is nothing short of amazing. Her imposing presence in a field that has been dominated by Chinese shuttlers has been refreshing, not to mention her expressive palm-fisting displays. 2015 was an exceptional year for Marin, a year where she frustrated the world's most powerful badminton nation. She overthrew Olympic gold medalist Li Xia Rei to become the top women's singles player on the world rankings. And she amassed five World Super Series titles last year, an impressive run that kicked off at the world's oldest tournament. She's done it. The world champion becomes the All England champion. 2015 also saw Marin defend her world championship title in Jakarta, another record for Spain. But just as her accolades were building up, the intensity of the game was also taking a toll on her body. Compared to her 2015 exploits, it's been a slow start to 2016 for last year's BWF Female Player of the Year. Her best performance in the World Super Series events this year was reaching the semi-finals of the All England, a far cry from the two titles she won at the same stage in 2015. I think in, I am in a good performance, but um, I have some uh, hard moments because uh, before the All England, I got an injury in my shoulder and I should stop it. And um, before the Malaysia Open, I was really sick and the, the best for my, for my shoulder is to have a break. And uh, when I was uh, flu, I have to stop it because uh, I couldn't train. I was um, yeah, very sad because uh, I want to prepare for the Malaysia and Singapore Open, but uh, I couldn't as, uh, as much as I want. As the most successful bearer of the Spanish flag in international badminton, it is undeniable that the two-time world champion feels the weight of expectations to replicate her performance in 2015. It's really difficult to, to win many tournaments like I did uh, last year. Sometimes I, I think that uh, maybe I have a little bit uh, pressure on uh, what I have to do, but I don't want to think about that. I want to, to think on the, on the plan that um, I have to, to, to go on court with, uh, with this, how um, I have to do, what I have to do in uh, every game that I have to play. As Marin was trying to get back to winning ways, Rachanok Intanon discovered her winning formula. Three back-to-back -back World Super Series titles have seen the Thai shuttler scale up the ladder, displacing Marin at the top of the rankings. But for the precocious player from Huelva, she is not going to let that worry her. Her focus is, of course, solely on her game. I don't think about the, the ranking, about the, the tournaments that I want. I want to think in uh, every game that they have to play. You know, when you are in the top 10, most of the players, we are the same level. So sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But the, um, the small things uh, is what, uh, what you became uh, best than, the, than your opponents. So you have to, to keep your focus on uh, what you are doing, uh, on training and on the tournament. And, uh, and you have to prepare every game like, uh, like the last game. Her fine performances last year have assured her a place on the plane to Brazil. She's currently number one in the race to Rio rankings and is pleased to be in a seeded qualifying spot. It's really important to keep uh, at the top five because um, if you want to, um, to have a, a good draw, you have to, to be on the top seeded. So that's why one of my goals for this year is uh, to keep 
at the top five to be at the top seed for the Olympic Games. The Olympic Games in Rio will be the Spaniards' second appearance at the Games and all eyes will be on Marin to return with the country's first badminton medal. Knowing that she's capable of a podium finish, it's crucial the shuttler stays focused as she prepares for sport's biggest stage. The pressure you have to control because uh, we know we are in the in different level if you compare with my first uh, Olympic Games. And uh, now I want to, to fight for, for a medal. In my first Olympic Games, I, I wasn't um, experienced uh, in, the, in the level of the Super Series. But, um, but now, one of my goals is to get a medal at the Olympic Games. And my goals in every train is, uh, is the medal in the Olympic Games. So if I keep my focus on that and uh, if I keep my, my high quality on the training, I think I can do it. And the shuttler is starting to find her groove. Crowned European champion this week, Carolina Marin secured her first victory of the year and showed her challenges that she has not lost her winning touch. And when August comes, Spain's leading lady is going for another first, an Olympic medal. Time to test your badminton knowledge. In this week's trivia, we want to know, what year did China first win the Thomas Cup? We give the answer after the break. When we return, we head to Indonesia to learn more about Exist, a fledgling badminton club in Jakarta. Before the break, we asked what year did China first win the Thomas Cup? The answer is 1982. China first participated in the Thomas Cup in 1982, and the Chinese won the prestigious men's team trophy in their debut appearance. Since then, China has lifted the coveted trophy a whopping nine times. They've dominated in the past decade, winning the Thomas Cup consecutively for five editions, from 2004 to 2012. They'll be going for their 10th title when the competition takes place in Kunshan, China, and as hosts, the Chinese are the team to beat. Welcome to Southeast Asia's biggest nation, Indonesia. The country isn't just famed for its vast size, but in the world of badminton, the Republic is also home to some of the finest talents in the game, past and present. Key to this is its competitive domestic club scene. Previously on this show, we've showcased some of these iconic institutions that have played influential roles in shaping the fortunes of the red and white. This week, we take a close look at a rookie club doing their bit to be part of the national cause. Walaupun klub baru, cita-citanya memberi yang terbaik untuk Indonesia. Even though we're new, our ambition is to give the best to Indonesia, especially in badminton. We try to prepare our players to the best we can so they can perform to their highest capabilities. One day, if they become part of the national team, they'll be amongst the best as well. Mereka bisa yang terbaik juga. Our cameras were in West Java, Indonesia, to report on EXIST, one of the country's newest badminton institutions. It was formed five years ago after founder Mr. Alex Dirta rallied together some fellow badminton enthusiasts to explore ways of grooming future talents for the country. Exis itu bermula dari ketua umum kita, Pak Alex. Exist Badminton Club began with our president, Mr. Alex Tirta, who was playing badminton as a hobby. From there, he wanted to help develop quality players for Indonesia, and the idea of starting a club came up. His friends supported the project, and all of them decided to build it up together for the love of badminton. Now that was back in March 2011. Since then, the club has grown in size and personnel. 
Exist currently has 120 players, closely monitored by its 15 coaches across all categories. With shuttlers ranging from the ages of 9 to 20, the club provides a structured pathway in which players can develop and progress at every stage. We have five different groups, from boys singles who are under 15 to the men singles who are older. It's the same with girls. We have four groups from these two categories, while we have one more for doubles. Each coach will carry out their respective responsibilities with about 20 to 25 players under him. We have a maximum of four training sessions daily. It depends on how much the players need. As they move up from one age group to the next, we make sure their development is continuous. We strive for the players' uninterrupted progression. This will continue up till the professional level. But progress aside, the EXIST coaching department has also been flexible in their expectations of players, just as long as they put in a 100% effort on the training courts. One of the challenges here is that our players come from all over, so their backgrounds are different. We have to put everyone on the same page, so we are able to move forward together. But it's not easy, especially with the younger ones. So the coaches have to take extra care handling these kids, like those who are 10 or 9 years old. I always tell my players that badminton is a career for them. Their life and soul should be for the sport. So if they are half-hearted, it will be at a loss for them. The EXIST formula is proving to be a winner on the domestic circuit. District and national titles already fill the club's trophy cabinet, even though EXIST is regarded as a new kid on the block amongst the more established clubs. Even if we're just five years of age, we cannot lose out to those big clubs like Jarum, Jaya Raya and others. Thank God we've been able to perform well and win titles. In the national circuit, we're always amongst the top four. I'm happy to play for EXIST. The club seen as one of the biggest in Indonesia now. I'm just proud. As competitive as it is, the rivalry between the clubs has always been healthy. Because at the end of the day, it's about preserving the country's successful tradition in the sport. Indonesia's biggest sporting achievements have come from badminton. We love our sport, and along with the other big Indonesian clubs, we treasure our heritage in badminton. All of us want to give our best and exploit the country's full potential. Indonesia has produced so many champions, and our quality is already that high. It's vital that we keep the success going for years to come. Indonesia's badminton future is in safe hands. With clubs like EXIST ever ready to contribute, the nation will always be challenging for the highest honours. The BWF World Super Series is a 12-tournament series in which the world's best singles and doubles players compete. At the end of the season, the top eight players and pairs secure their spots in the Dubai World Super Series Finals. Let's take a look at the women's single standings after tournaments in England, India, Malaysia and Singapore. In form, Rachanok Intanon tops the list after winning three out of the four World Super Series events so far. The Thai shuttler became the first single shuttler to go on a run of three straight victories in as many weeks. She also reached another milestone by capturing the number one spot in the world rankings, another first both for her and Thailand. Consistent latter stage finishes has seen Chinese Taipei's Tai Ju Ying rack up the points to make the second spot. All England winner Nozomi Okuhara of Japan is in sixth, 
While Carolina Marin has not had a great Super Series season so far, the double world champion lies in seventh. The Destination Dubai rankings are updated every Thursday after a World Super Series tournament. To find out how the players are doing in their race to make the cut for the season-ending tournament in Dubai, log on to bwfbadminton.com or bwfworldsuperseries.com for the latest information and news. After the break, we're in sunny Singapore to witness a record-breaking moment as the Monford fraternity attempts to hit the longest badminton rally. All the information you need in the world of badminton is just a click away. Log on to www.bwfbadminton.com for all the latest news and information. The fan site is the go-to place for event details, tournament schedules, results, rankings and statistics. My parents were working in Ban Tong Yod, a sweets factory in Bangkok, where Kun Kamala is the owner. When my mother was pregnant with me, she went back to her hometown, Yasuton, to give birth to me. She subsequently moved back to Bangkok to continue working at the sweets factory. I was about three months old when she returned. When my parents were busy working, Kamala, I called her Mami Pook, would take care of me. This went on until I was around five to six years old. I would run around and play with my friends in the factory. Mami Pook thought learning a sport would be good for me. She was the one who introduced badminton to me. I used to watch the kids play at Ban Tong Yod Badminton School. I was fascinated. I thought they were very good as they could hit the shuttle over the net and rally. So I wanted to join in and play the sport as well. I started learning the basics and no one was expecting me to win or become serious about badminton. I played the sport as a way of making good use of my free time and didn't think I would be good at it or that I would grow to love the game so much. I continued to train and hone my skills until I had the chance to compete in tournaments around Thailand. When I started winning competitions, I felt excited and loved competing and wanted to participate in more tournaments. It also felt good to win because I received prize money as a reward and I no longer had to ask from my parents. Mummy Pook would also help me save some of the money. I attended all the different local tournaments and was winning, and I got the chance to compete abroad. After that, I was selected for the Thailand national team. When they come to write the history of badminton in Singapore, this name will be at the forefront. Monford Secondary, a Catholic school providing education to students, regardless of race, religion or disability, has long been known as the go-to place for young badminton players in the island nation. So, what better way of celebrating its centenary year in 2016 than trying to break a national and possibly a world record? A group of us uh, came together and said that we should do something um, spectacular for badminton during our 100 years uh, anniversary. And my teammate Run Xiang, who is also a captain of the team, he went online and he searched, hey, there is this uh, record uh, that is being broken before and it's about uh, the longest rally. So longest rally, it means like uh, you have continuous rally, so uh, different people get to hit um, at different point of time and then uh, continuously throughout this whole rally. 
the moment the shutter clock drops, you gotta restart the count again from one. So the record is 119 times for the Singapore record and 120 for the world record. Monford brought together 149 shuttlers, the majority from past and present pupils. They ranged in ages from seven years old to over 50, all coming together to make an attempt on the record. I'm from the Singapore Book of Records and I'm here to make sure that this record is properly organised, properly executed and, uh, and that it follows all the rules that we have set for them. Returning to the school alongside dozens of proud parents were many former students, a number of whom made it to the top of the badminton tree in Singapore. Even though I've left, I haven't met them for many, many years, but I still feel that I'm, just, I'm still part of this big family. Yeah. So actually, I'm very proud of being a Montfortian. Yeah. It just shows how strong the Montfortian, the Montfortian spirit is, is still inside them. And they are still willing to come back and, and, and helping out with, the, with this rally. Montford's long history with badminton was most evident at the turn of the century. The boys' only school won nine consecutive championship titles before the emergence of the Singapore Sports School. The current crop of students are determined to return Montford to its past glories. The pupils are encouraged to bring their rackets to school where they'll head to the courts before and after classes to hone their skills. So, how well would all that practice help the students with their attempt on the national record? First of all, the all-important warm-up. As Alex took the 149 wannabe record breakers through their paces, expectant family members waited on the sidelines to witness history being attempted. Were the adults as confident as the youngsters that a Singapore and perhaps world record could be broken? A badminton rally record is always very exciting because uh, you build up the numbers and then just when you are close to, to, to breaking the record, someone will drop the, the shuttlecock and everything has to start all over again. Actually, my major worry is always the 8 years old and 9 years old, whether can they keep up with them. The spirit must be high, the morale high. If we accidentally do not break the record, we have already achieved um, certain success in this event as well to get back all the boys, old boys, current boys, to the school for this common sport together. So I think that's very heartwarming as well. The previous Singapore national record of 119 successful hits completed within a two-hour time window has stood for 18 months. There were expected bumps along the way, but Montford's school motto is not do well in whatever you do for no reason. As the count rose to triple figures a number of times, the level of tension and excitement soared like a shuttlecock. And this was the moment when all the hard work and togetherness paid off. The national record of 119 and the world record of 120 smashed by Montford. Now the only question was, how high could they get the new mark? As the shuttle finally fell, Monfort has rewritten history, making it into the record books at 129. The moment was um, unbelievable. It was something that I, I would say money can't buy. When we broke the record, we felt happy to break the world record. First, when I saw some of the young people I even involved, I was a bit uh, apprehensive. I say, well, why didn't they set a minimum age limit? But well, it proves that even the young one can play just as good as the, as the adults. The vision was clear, the mission complete. Monford are the new record holders for the longest rally in the world. Get in touch with us on social media, follow us on Twitter, tell us what you think of the latest news, or perhaps you just want to leave an encouraging note for your favourite player. If you've got any comments or photos to share, do get connected with us on these social media sites. Before we go, let's see what's happening on the international circuit in our Badminton Unlimited calendar.
Hi, I'm Big Tarkinson and I have accepted the Badminton Unlimited Challenge. The Dane has been learning Mandarin, so we put him to the test with some tricky Chinese tongue twisters. 14 is 14, 40 is 40. See you next week.